Arsenal were the better side today. They had more control over what they were doing. Yes, they counter-attacked. But not only did they counter-attack, when they did have the ball and the counter-attack wasn't on, they kept the ball, which is something that Manchester United cannot do. What positives can you take out of that game today? You scored a goal. That's a positive. And we played football. And we ran around and we gained better fitness. We now know what we're up against. This Arsenal team are supposed to be the second best team in the league. So technically speaking, Let's, let's fall back a little bit and not be too emotional. Let's just say what we saw today. Let's talk about what we saw with our eyes. For large parts of the game, we were outplayed by Arsenal. When Martinelli came on, he was tormenting our fullbacks. The fullbacks and the defence we had in the second half were a bunch of kids. So, that is, and they didn't really have kids as defenders really um so you can argue in one hand or one respect that we were always supposed to lose this game because arsenal are the better side however as i said before at the start of the stream based on the players that we have and the team that we have we could but we sh could have and should have maybe gotten something out of that game Arsenal were the better side today. They had more control over what they were doing. Yes, they counter-attacked. But not only did they counter-attack, when they did have the ball and the counter-attack wasn't on, they kept the ball, which is something that Manchester United cannot do. We know how to counter-attack and play very quickly. On the transition, we do not know how to keep the ball when the counter-attack is not on. If there aren't spaces to run in behind, Rash the way we play fo football, basically, is to suit the Rashfords and the, and the Garnachos and the Hoylands. Guys who can't keep the ball, but are very quick and can play transition football. We need to evolve our game to learn how to play possession football. Because not all teams are going to give you space behind to counter-attack or to play on the transition. As we saw last season, our worst season ever in the Premier League's history is a season where this manager decided to play transition football and play the Garnachos, Hoylands and the Rashfords. That was a failure that failed. So this season, I don't need to see that again. I need to see technical possession-based football. I need to see United not just exploit spaces in behind because often there will not be those spaces to exploit there won't be teams will fall back into shape very quickly fall back into their defensive shape into their low blocks into their mid blocks very quickly which means we're gonna have to learn how to stop the attack is uh, counter attack is not on pass the ball back rotate it keep moving which means we're going to need technically sound footballers not just footballers that are quick that can move the ball very quickly footballers who are technically sound who have control who can play in tight spaces we're going to need footballers like that and at the moment i think the manager is caught between footballers who can only really play and exploit spaces like the garnachos and the rashfords and players like Ahmad's and Sancho's who can pin teams back, who can keep the ball, who can rotate the ball, who can move into different positions because Sancho can be can go wide, he can go into the middle, so can Ahmad, so on and so forth. The identity for me needs to be formed. What's going on here? What is going what is this nonsense? Uh, penalties for what reason I don't understand Americans 
Listen, Americans, I know, don't they don't do draws. I get it. Americans don't do draws. But Arsenal won the match. So why are we doing penalties? This is crazy. But United have won the penalty shootout, guys. Jaden Sancho scored the last penalty for Manchester United. I think it was 4-2 on penalties. Whatever that means, I don't really understand why we went to penalties. I don't understand why they had to happen. But since this is a pre-season friendly, why not, A? Eh? Why not? Why not? It wasn't a good game to watch. If you're a neutral, you don't care for either team and you're watching this, you're going to say, this is some BS. This, is, this wasn't a good game. As a Manchester United fan, I wasn't impressed by the way we played at all. In the first half, we were better. Second half, we were absolutely trash. And in fact, only the first 15 minutes, we were decent. And even in the first 15 minutes, it was the game hadn't settled. Arsenal hadn't settled into their rhythm, into their pattern of play. And we were just capitalising on the fact that they hadn't settled. The counter-attacks that we had, the, the transitions, some of the football, that we, especially in the first 15, 20 minutes, was really, was good, was good. But that didn't last long. And very quickly, Arsenal got into their groove, got into their pattern, started playing football, and we looked like boys. We looked like little boys playing. And like I said, we need to define now our identity. I do not want to see this transition football and see Garnacho and Rashford and Hoyland. I don't want to see that. We saw that last season, guys, and we were crap because of it. We were shit because of it. So I do not want to see that again. I added, add Bruno to that, who loses the ball all the time. Rashford, who loses the ball all the time. Garnacho, who, who loses the ball all the time. Hoyland, who loses the ball all the time. What type of football? Now, let's think about this without being emotional, just logically. If you have those four players who we all see lose the ball often because they just get the ball, not Bruno, because he can't dribble, but they get the ball and they just run at their man, lose the ball. Get the ball, run at your man, lose the ball. Receive the ball, run at your man, lose the ball. Maynard under pressure. Casemiro by himself in the, in the midfield. Not on goal. Garnacho gets the ball, tries to beat his man. They, they win the ball back. Counter-attack, Casemiro by himself in the midfield. They score. Time and time again, we saw this. We saw this. So we need footballers who can say, do you know what? I can't beat my man. There's four defenders in front of me. I'm not going to try to run and beat them all. What I'm going to do is keep the ball and give it. I'm going to rotate the ball. I'm going to keep possession and try to find another opening. We need more players like that. We need to find a way to play like that. To pin teams back the way Man City and Arsenal do. And keep it moving. Keep the ball moving. But we can't play like that. Once our attack is over, once we've tried to counter-attack and it's failed, we lose the ball. Because someone tries a crazy pass. Bruno will try, try a pass that's not on. That's impossible. Somebody... Like Rashford on playing on the left will try to cut in on his right foot like he always does and run into three or four defenders like a headless chicken. We'll lose the ball. They will counter-attack. We will have one person in the midfield, which is Casemiro by himself, and then we'll concede. Rinse and repeat. We have The manager has to change that and he has to play a more controlled possession style football. Yes, we need to counter-attack and exploit the spaces in behind, but we need to rotate and keep the ball. That's what I need to see this season. I need to see good football. I need to see combination play. That's what I want to see this season. This match wasn't it. We did not see it. We saw it in glimpses, maybe in the first half. But other than that, we did not see that type of football in this match, which is very disappointing because I really thought United today we're going to beat Arsenal. And we didn't. Does that matter in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things? No, of course not. It's a pre-season friendly. But bragging, bragging rights is important. Confidence going into the season is important. And what this might have done is show a lot of players that, do you know what? We've got a lot of work to do. We've still got Maguire here. We've still got Lindelof here. 
We saw playing with Johnny Evans, a 50 year old. He's not 50, by the way. But old man at, at the back. Our defense is the same. Hold on a second. We still don't have a fullback coming in. We're still playing with Aaron, Aaron Wambasaka. Hold on. We still got Ericsson, who's got no legs. And Casemiro. Hold on. We still got Anthony. Hold, Hoyland, hold, hold on. What's changed? Nothing so far. So we've got work to do. We have work to do, guys. I'm not going to lie. So it is what it is. Um, like I said, the game wasn't that good. Ahmad, I think he still can. He still can be the guy on the right hand side. Ahmad, I feel I still think he can own that right hand side, but. At the same time, I know that we have players that we can rotate. In some games, we want to keep possession of the ball, play Ahmad, and play Jaden Sancho. Play those sort of players if you want to keep control of the game, maintain possession. In some games, you might want to play more on the, on the transition. You might want to play more on a counter attack. And therefore, you might want to play the Garnachos and the Rashfords. It's about playing players maybe in different game situations. And within one, within one game, you have different periods of play. You have times within a game where you're under, the, under pressure. You have times in a game where you're putting the other team under pressure. And you might, you know, want to take off a Jaden Sancho in the 70th minute because you need someone to run in behind. It's about game management. And I think we have different profiles now. Different profiles of attackers where we can mix and match within a game. Not just between games. Which is good. However, that, I don't think that should take away from having a defining style of play. Right? You can still have a defining style of play while managing a game and changing your approach within that game while still having a fundamental principled style of play. Rashford played all right today. I'm worried about Lenny Euro. He's an 18-year-old kid. He's played a lot of games as an 18-year-old in the first team in France. And he's come over here in his second game and he's injured. What does that mean? Do we look at the French league? Because the French league is physical. It is a physical league. So what does that mean? Do we look at the French league as, I don't know, not as physical, not, not physically preparing him, not physically conditioning him? Because this, this, match was quite fast paced was quite rough especially in the first half we were stomping on heads like I said Odegaard was getting clamped Jesus was getting punched up so it's a worry for me that Lenny's already injured in pre-season Rasmus he took his goal well he took his goal well today and it's a shame actually that he's gone off injured because I criticised him and I gave my objective feedback on how I saw him play last season and in the Euros. I gave my my criticisms, right? And what I thought, in my opinion, was the fact that I don't think he should be given the number nine shirt. I don't think he's done enough in football. Not even at United, but in football, to warrant the top banger striker number. The number that, you know, Mandem get 20 plus goals wearing that number. He's not him. But he took his goal well, and it's a shame that he had to go off. It's a shame he had to go off. Because I think he was, you know, when somebody scores a goal and they're just confident and they're going to, and they could grow with confidence after the goal. I, th I really feel that he could have gone on in this game and, and scored again. So it will be very interesting to find out what role Rasmus plays. 
if he's injured and the injury is at least for a couple months and Xerxes comes in and takes that spot, plays well, what happens? What is them? Because we don't know what the manager is thinking. Just because we got Xerxes and everyone's gassed, it doesn't mean the manager is thinking of starting Xerxes. Maybe the manager is still saying, I mean, if you're giving them a nine shirt, what does that mean? Maybe the manager feels like Hoyland is still his number one striker. If Xerxes starts the season and plays well, does the manager have favourites? Is he going to be like, as soon as Rasmus is fit, he goes straight back into the team? We don't, we've seen him have favourites before. We've seen how he acts with, with his favourites, so we don't know. I just hope that he's not as stubborn as he was last season. Ten Hag was very, very stubborn. He stuck to certain players, he stuck to certain formations, and he stuck to certain ways of playing, even though everybody could see that it wasn't working. We were battered in many games last season. It was our worst season ever. The football we played last season was atrocious. We still managed somehow to scam our way to an FA Cup and beat a drunk, hungover Man City team. And because of, because of the fact we, we beat this drunken Man City team, this guy has kept his job. We have all forgotten the football that we played under him and the football that this man implemented. And now that we're playing a really good team in Arsenal, I think it's reminded us all of the challenges ahead. Not just for Ten Hag, but the challenges ahead for the coaching staff. Of course, for the players, that's, no, that's not to, even to be said. But for Ineos, they've stuck with this man and they've said they want more possession-based football. So let's see if this manager can develop and can deliver that. My pick for United manager was a De Zerbi because we've seen De Zerbi play a certain style of football before with worst players at um, Brighton. We've seen Deserbi with Brighton players who are not as good as United players and we've seen them ball out. We've seen them play attractive possession and attacking the football. So whenever you see a manager with worse players play better football than you, you have to ask questions about the coaching and about the manager that we have. We've forgotten all about that and I think when the season starts, I hope not. I pray that when the season starts, Ten Hag has a new slate. He plays... I thought that was looks like Justin um, Bieber. Um, he plays better football and all is to be forgotten. But I don't, I don't know, guys. I hope I'm not taking too much from this game as well. I really do. It's just one game at the end of the day, right? So we also need to remember that it's just one game. But... It is what it is. It is what it is. We ain't got no Kobe Manu. We got no Bruno Fernandes as well in our midfield. So we are missing some attacking players and the likes of Martinez and the likes of Garnacho. So we do have players to come back and to come into this team. So a lot of negatives from this game, but also we have to caveat all the negatives by saying it's just one game and it just, it's just pre-season and we are missing players. So nuance, right? Nuance is needed. Onwards and upwards, as I always say on this channel, I love talking about football. I like assessing football, not just at a micro level, but at, at a macro level. I love digesting and dissecting what I see on screen. Scream? On screen. And trying to make sense of what I see. Because a lot of people, and one thing I've noticed, a lot of fans, they don't actually like football. They're not fans of football. They just want to win. They don't care about how we win. They don't care about the quality of the football. As long as the final score says Man United have won the match, they will go home happy. I'm not that type of football fan. I don't spend money to watch a movie and the movie like i said before the movie's absolutely shit but because the good guy wins at the end 
I'm going to be happy. No, no, I've spent money for a whole two hour experience. So if for two hours I'm seeing the shittest football ever and we win, I'll be happy that we win. But I also remember that I haven't won anything. They've won and I'm not them. I'm myself. So I can feel good watching my team win, but essentially I need to feel like my time has been used wisely. That two hours that we watch football and we're watching shit football, we will never get back. So the experience matters. Like I said, Fergie will tell you how we win matters, not just the fact that we have won. And that is what I want to see this season. A whole transformation, a whole change in mindset in the way that we play football. I hope we get more signings over the line. I do not want Mazrawi. I really don't. But if we get him, he's still an, probably an upgrade to Aaron Wambasaka. So it is what it is. Even though I want Everton now to just get bankrupt. The way that they're trying to charge us 60 M's for Branthwaite, they're cheeky. They're very, very cheeky. And I see that the takeover bid for Everton has fallen through. It's not going to happen. In fact, I think the news is saying that Everton are, they don't have any money. So a team, a club that doesn't have any money, that need money, are trying to play hardball. No, 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 no. I, I don't want anything positive for Everton. I want Everton to get relegated. Just for that. Just for that. So in a way, because of that, I want to be petty and say, suck your mother. I'm not going to give you no money for Branthwaite. I hope Man United go in for Branthwaite in the last few days of the transfer window and offer like 30 million. Just to see what Everton do. But at the same time, I think we need Branthwaite. If Lenny Euro is injured, we need either De Ligt, which it seems he's going to Madrid, or Branthwaite. We need somebody. So pride aside, pettiness aside, go and get Branthwaite. Go and get him. Go back in for him. Test Everton one last time to see what they do. Ugarte, if we get him, good. We need a bit of combative, combativeness in midfield. But at the same time, if we had to get one number six or one player to play in the pivot, I would prefer to get Zubamendi, even though he's a different profile of player. I do not believe United have that player who can play out from the back. And Zubamendi would be that player for me. A lot of United fans want Zubamendi. I don't think United can get him. But at the same time, I said that about Lenny. And we got, we got Lenny Euro. So, who knows? Who knows? PSG are wanting 60 M's for Ugarte. They can go, they, they can get lost with that. No, no swap deals. If United let go of Sancho now, especially after seeing what they see, of seeing what they've seen in the preseason so far, they would be crazy. If you are a United fan who just filled with loads of hate and loads of emotion and can't think. If you still want Jadon Sancho out and start the season with the same wingers that gave you eighth position last season, then you are on some Colombian crack. Fully. If you want to start the season with the same wingers, the Garnacho, Anthony, Ahmad and Rashford that gave you eighth position last season, with no changes, then something's wrong with you. Your agenda is just hurting the football club. And I think some fans, you know, deep down, it's about feelings. It's, it's religion. So there's loads of fans who want to feel good with seeing Garnacho and Rasmus Hoyland and all the pictures and getting all the poses and hitting them, them two with Kobe as the, the future. And they want to feel good and finish eighth. Finishing eighth shouldn't make you feel good. You shouldn't be like, oh, we finished eighth, but I feel good because Garnacho. No, it should be, uh, this is crap because we finished eighth. Fuck Garnacho. Fuck everything else because we finished eighth. Like, they've, United, with their PR, has managed to brainwash so many United fans, so many, in accepting mediocrity. 
mediocre footballers. And on this channel, we're going to reset this whole thing. We're going to reset it. Because on this channel, we talk about technical footballers. Technical footballers with good fundamentals. And a lot of United footballers now do not have, for me, the necessary fundamentals to be at the club. They do not. It will be a very interesting season ahead. Ten Hag, new lease of life. What is he going to do with his 10th life? Cats have nine. This guy's got a 10th life. What's he going to do with it? Hmm. Anthony. Anthony is a problem. I've defended Anthony. When he first came and he did all his round and round circle stuff, I was like, this is entertaining. And United play entertaining football. I don't mind it, but it's been two seasons now and he's go, now going into his third season. This preseason game is his first football match. First game, I think. I believe. So, I'm not going to go fully hard on him, but I will say this. He was shit today. He was shit. He didn't do anything good. Nothing. I need substance from this guy. Like, Sancho was not a pace and power player. And Sancho didn't have a great second um, sec uh, half of football either. But at least I feel when Sancho has the ball, Sancho has an, at least an idea of what he wants to do with it. And if nothing is on, if he can't play it forward or can't dribble forward Sancho, he will pass the ball back and try to rotate the ball and try to probe, try to keep possession. I feel like Sancho has an idea of what he wants to do. I don't know if Anthony has that footballing IQ that is needed. I don't think he's intelligent enough to, like, when he gets the ball, see that there is space on the right for him to run. So why don't I just run down the wing, down the byline? Why does, do I need to always cut in? Like, Anthony will have the ball. There'll be space down the right-hand side for him to dribble into or for him to run into. And he will still try to cut in into, crowded, into a crowded area on his left foot. That, to me, screams lack of football intelligence. Maybe if he had a fullback that was overlapping, overlapping, that could help him, him and Sancho. But for me, Anthony often, often, or too often, makes the wrong decision. So I don't know what's going to happen with five wingers and Xerxes, who can often drift wide. It's going to be very interesting. Ericsson needs to go. Aaron Wamasaka needs to go as long as we get a replacement in for him. And. Yeah, we'll just have to see what happens, guys. We'll just have to see what happens. It wasn't a good game, but I hope the coaching staff and Ten Hag have learnt something from this game. It will show them how far away they are and where they need to get to. That's what this game will show them. We will be back again, guys. Smash the like, share the video. Real talk here, real football talk, dissecting the games properly on this channel. That's what we do. That's what we do, guys. Hold tight, like I said, all the other YouTubers out there that are big in this game, that are badding up. Hold tight, United View. Hold tight, Flex and KG, and them man there. Saeed, AFTV, all the guys are out in LA right now. I've been watching the, the vlogs, enjoying the villas and all them things there, enjoying the time in LA. You guys are doing your thing, man. Keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing this channel. So watch this space. If you want real football opinions, real football talk, dissecting shit, this is the channel. This is the channel. This season is going to be a mad one. I can feel it. The transfer window... Listen, only opened at the beginning of July. We've got a month 
month and a couple of weeks or month and a half left of the transfer window. So there's still time. There's still a lot of work for us to do. And trust me, we need to do this work. Ineos have started well. Let's not kid ourselves. Ineos have started well. Things have slowed down a little bit. And I think the reason why things have slowed down is because there haven't been, apart from Mason Greenwood, who we got a decent amount of money for, there haven't been too many outgoings. And I think we need to raise some more money. That's one of the main things that are happening. So it's 3.43 in the morning. If you're struggling, if you're passing through, smash the like, guys. Um, we've got one more game, I think. Real Betis. And we've got Liverpool as well coming up. So, yeah. Let's do this, man. Let's do this. I'm out, man. I'm good now. I think I have said all I need to say. Smash the like, guys. Enjoy, the, enjoy your day. Enjoy your week. And I'll be back maybe i think on thursday if i can with another watch along but yeah i've just been told that the game on thursday is at 3 a.m which means there is no watch along there is no watch along i'm gonna try i'm gonna try i'm gonna try a thing but don't hold me to it don't hold me to it because sometimes people need to sleep. Sometimes they do and sleep is important. But I'm going to try a thing. Anyway, guys, have a good one, man. Uh, take care, man. Peace out. Love.